the sheriff here of Fort Bend County. And the purpose of this uh, press conference today is to address an issue related to a traffic stop between Mr. Roberts, Roberts and our, uh, the Fort Bend County Sheriff's Office. Yesterday, uh, USA Today Sports, A.J. Perez, posted on his social media an edited version of the traffic stop. The traffic stop took uh, 16 minutes and 44 seconds. Mr. Perez's video is a little over 1 minute and 31 seconds. And what Mr. Perez chose to do is edit the video to his liking. He edited the video to his liking, and it's certainly with a false narrative. I think that his video is inaccurate. When you watch the video, the interaction with the deputy and Mr. Roberts the music drowns it out. So you really can't even hear the main interaction with Deputy Watkins and Mr. Roberts. His video is full of inaccuracies. So what we would like to do is we would like to play that video first and then we will upload the 16 minute and 44 second video uh, taken off the dash cam of Deputy Watkins vehicle. Now within that 16 minutes and 44 seconds, there is eight minutes of really complete silence where De Deputy Watkins is asking for a backup unit to arrive to continue on with the traffic stop. So if you don't mind, uh, just look at the screen and we are gonna play the video that Mr. Perez from USA Today Sports placed on his social media yesterday. <laughs> What's interesting about that, what did you capture? You're free to go. What about the other, the interaction with Deputy Roberts, still, or Mr. Roberts? Don't you think that would have been important to have that in there? But again, music is covering it. You can't hear what the deputy is actually saying to Mr. Roberts during that traffic stop. Now we will play the portion, of the 16 minute version. Thank you, Charlie. 
It's where he asked for backup. He'd like to have another unit assist him. Let them go. Back in the house. Go back in the house. Man, if you don't go back in the house, you're going to be arrested. Go back in the house for your safety. Do it now. This traffic stop took place on Wednesday, March 10th, and it was at 9.53 p.m. Well, we'll just have some time here at 9.53 p.m. in the Pecan Grove subdivision here in Fort Bend County. He was stopped for speeding, uh, going 59 in a 35 mile an hour zone. That was the probable cause for the traffic stop, 59 miles an hour in a 35 mile an hour zone. What you're seeing here now is uh, Deputy Watkins, he asked for backup, um, and he asked for the backup to be non-emergency, meaning he doesn't want people driving 90 miles an hour. He wanted somebody just to come there and back him up. And there's an eight minute where it's really just nothing but silence. All you'll see is just this video like this for eight minutes. Do you have the ability to go yeah. through and just, we'll, we'll, we're gonna release the entire video in its entirety, on, on, it's on YouTube. But for the sake of today, why don't we just kind of forward a little bit and go to where we actually have interaction when the backup units arrive. Gotcha. Okay, back up just a little bit, please. Put your hands on top of the steering wheel. Deputy Sheriff Watkins, open ground sheriff's office. The reason why you stopped is because you're going 59 and 35. May I please see your driver's license and proof of insurance? Gotcha. Yeah, 
So now Deputy Watkins is inside his vehicle. He has his driver's license. He is now running uh, Mr. Roberts and then he will be issuing him a citation for the speeding and the failure to prove financial responsibility or having insurance. Um, due to the fact that this was an out of state plate, if you don't know that if you have a Texas license plate and you run a Texas license plate, it will say whether there's current insurance on the vehicle. We couldn't do that in this case because the plate come back to the state of Washington. Was that Watkins that was talking to him just now? Yes, that was the deputy, in, yes, with the traffic stop. Those beepings are from the computer that are, are coming back with returns on, on, on a person's driver's license. When you run it, the computer will beep, let you know if this is the return is coming back for the individual that you rank. For the purpose of this, uh, there's no other interaction until he gets back out of his vehicle and issues a citation. If we can forward to that, and again, this is on YouTube, the entire 60 minute, 44 second that you can review. So he's exiting his car at 1538.
and that'll be all. I hope you notice the, the difference in between what Mr. Perez put out in his one minute and 31 second version. He didn't capture any of the interaction between really the, the Mr. Watkins and Mr. Roberts. Um, with me is Patrol Captain Steve Holtz. Um, if you have any questions that relates to policies and procedures, how we conduct traffic stops here in Fort Bend County. But I'm open to questions if you have any questions uh, regarding, but uh, I hope you, you saw the difference um, uh, with what Mr. Perez put in his minute and 31 second version and the 16 minute and 44 second version. So, uh, so wait, you have a problem with what the, I believe um, <coughs> the football player's attorney has an issue with the traffic stop. Okay. And that is, and she has been releasing the video in full. Okay. So I believe the, their issue is not mm -hmm. like a truncated reality, but okay. the full, they, they take issue mm -hmm. with what happened in, in mm -hmm. the full 16 minutes. Do you disagree with that? The only reason we are here today, in my opinion, is what Mr. Perez put out yesterday. Because until he released what he put out on USA Today Sports, Nobody was making any phone calls. Nobody was calling our office. So no, I beg to differ. It's the minute and 31 second version. Do, do you I haven't seen her version. Well, she actually just released the video. And the when did she release it? it? I don't know. I mean, people have had it since yesterday. Okay. I mean, not me personally, okay. but other Do you people. think the deputy did anything wrong in that stuff? Anything I think should be criticized or retrained about uh, things that he did wrong? What did he do wrong? Absolutely. And now I'm going to refer to my patrol captain who had conversations with uh, Mr. Watkins after the traffic stop took place and feel free to speak upon that Steve. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I reviewed the video in its entirety with Deputy Watkins. Uh, we looked at a lot of different factors. Obviously we, we can't look at this in a vacuum but Deputy Watkins had about three months of experience on the road at the time that this entire incident occurred. He had graduated from our academy, the Gus George Law Enforcement Academy uh, had gone through our FTO program and had just recently got out, gotten out on the road. Um, so when he made this traffic stop, obviously I've got 23 years of experience with the Department of Public Safety, I retired from DPS and then came to work for the Fort Bend County Sheriff's Office. So when I look at that, I have to look at it in the eyes of a guy who's been on this road for three months, three or four months. And so are there some things that I thought that we can retrain and do better at? Absolutely. I'm not here to tell you that, it, that there's not because there is. I don't think that we should have, just for instance, should we have yelled at his wife because she stood out there on the porch? No, no, I didn't think so. I thought the wife had a certain right to be out there on the porch and we, we could have interacted with her, <clears throat> excuse me, in a different way. So can we retrain that though? Can I talk to him about that and can he recognize those factors? Absolutely. Do I think that if it was I who made the traffic stop, you know, 30 years later in my, my experience, would I have called for backup here? No, I would not have. I would not have. In about five minutes, I would have left Mr. Roberts there with his citation for speeding 59 and the 35 and walked away. But I, again, have to take this as a four-month deputy out on the road and his experience. He told me that he was nervous when he made that traffic stop. I take that into account. Okay, you're nervous. That changes the things, the factors that we have because he is nervous about the stop, so he called for backup, and the stop does take an extensive amount of time, almost 17 minutes. So. Those things are things that we look at and we talk about and train. Did you say why he was nervous? No, sir. He just made the comment that I was nervous at the time. He said he, he actually, I, correction, correction, he said that he never had a person get out um, uh, immediately upon him stopping him. He said that, that kind of got me nervous. You know, he, he hadn't experienced that before, so there was the reason why he was nervous. They seem to have an issue with the fact that he uh, referred to uh, the football player as the big black man. What do you guys think about that? He did refer to him as a big black man. He referred to him as a big black male. Okay. He seems to have a problem with referring, you guys referring to him as a big black male. What do you have to say for that? Hey, my, this here, <laughs> this guy here is a big white male. Is he not? So you're saying that's just the way law enforcement talks <clears throat> when they're describing somebody on the radio. Sure. He would have said a large Caucasian male. Let's hypothetically say an officer is making a traffic stop and two individuals jump out of the vehicle and run and they're Hispanic. 
how would you want us to put out those physical descriptors to let everybody else know who ran from the vehicle? Explain. I'm just asking you. I'm asking you the question. How do you explain the descriptors of, okay, in this example, if Mr. Roberts would have run from the scene, how would Deputy Watkins give a physical description of the individual running from the scene? Go. Sir, I believe the question is he described him as a big black male to someone over the radio, and that is the issue that the football players attorney has and I was wondering if that issue is justified. I do, he, he defined him, Mr. Roberts had, was got out of the vehicle initially as a big black male. Is that not, it? and he is, he's a very large man and he is a big black male. How do you describe it? How, how would you describe him? So therefore the allegations that your deputy harassed no. this no. person is inaccurate and false? What happens is Mr. Perez and some of you in this room are trying to make this issue a racial, a racial issue, and it is not. Mr. Perez creates a minute and 30 seconds and wants to turn this into a race issue. Let me tell you something about Fort Bend County. Fort Bend County is the most diverse county in the entire country. Your viewers need to understand it. The most diverse county in the entire country and we are successful, not only the Fort Bend County Sheriff's Office, but law enforcement agencies throughout this county are successful in dealing with the citizens we serve because of the relationships that we have built with that diversity. The public trusts us and we trust them. But, uh, in regards to your uh, officers and the training, I mean, what do you do in a society in a, in a, in a, in a time where, where you have Mr. Roberts himself saying, these are his words. Unfortunately, these types of things are happening all too often to African Americans. I mean, uh, that's on the minds of a lot of people right now. You know a lot of people feel that that's an issue, so what do you tell your officers? I can't disagree with Mr. Roberts. I think there have been travesties. There have been, there have been traffic stops and interactions between uh, white and black that have caused some of the most horrible civil unrest in this country. Going back to Freddie Gray, you could go back to Ferguson, you go back to Baltimore, and the interactions with the police and the community that we serve, there have been some trying, some very trying times in law enforcement throughout the past several years. But we haven't experienced that in Fort Bend County. And when I think what you do is when you take a minute and 31 seconds, you edit it, and you try to spin this and turn this that Mr. Watkins is stopping Mr. Roberts because he's black? Really? He was going 59 in a 35. And I, I don't really, quite honestly, yes, I didn't like the way the traffic stop, the length of the traffic stop was conducted. I did not like, like the captain said, I did not like the way uh, our deputy interacted with the, his wife. So these are some things that we can continue to train and work on. And was the uh, officer reprimanded anyway, or, or what, what's the? I will, I will refer that. He, he received a verbal reprimand from myself uh, during the uh, review of that videotape together. Well, what do you, um, Can I, let me ask a question. Sure. Sheriff, if, um, I understand the charges were dropped the next day, is that right? Well, I'll, I'll let that, you explain if how. If they that. were, why was that? Why that? Good question. I, I don't recall if it was the next day exactly which day, and it, it wasn't so much as they were dropped. The citation itself was changed from a citation to a warning. Um, after reviewing the entire video with Deputy Watkins, taking a look at it, uh, it he, he was very receptive to what I had to say. Uh, he he's, he's wants to learn, and he thought that by the end of the, our conversation, he asked me, he said, Captain, do you mind if I change this to a warning? I said, I have no problem. That's the officer's discretion, obviously, to change the citation to a warning if he wanted to do so. He felt that that would be the best thing at the time, and that's what he did. Sheriff, did you get to meet with Landon <clears throat> Roberts and his attorney? I did. I did. Uh, I invited them to the office, and we had a great conversation. We sat at my couch. I think maybe the, the meeting could have lasted for 20 minutes or so. And I, exp and I, and I apologized to Mr. Roberts for the length of the traffic stop. Uh, and he felt that 
I don't believe at that point in time he ever felt there was any race brought into this. He just felt that it wasn't very, there wasn't a whole lot of professionalism and, and courtesy. I don't think when Mr. Roberts exited the vehicle, he intended to harm anyone or do anything. He just got out of the vehicle and deputies are trained, you know, get back in the vehicle because that's the safest place to be for not only the operator, but the deputy as well. And he did say, get back in the vehicle. And Mr. Roberts complied with that. But I need somebody here to tell me, now that you saw actually the interaction, the main interaction with Deputy Watkins and Mr. Roberts, the seven-step violator contact, what portion of that interaction do you disagree with? Are you aware that a complaint has been filed with the district attorney's office in this case? I, I have no issue with that. If there was something clearly the deputy could have improved upon that you guys had a training discussion on and you changed it to a warning so on and so forth if that since that took place is it still your position that there was no the sole reason we're here is because of usa today video couldn't it be because of some of the conduct by the deputy and the fact that it was recorded on video and his attorneys felt like there's a significant there's enough for some sort of complaint. I mean, I guess my point is like when my interaction to answer your question, my interaction with Mr. Roberts, the attorney, was very professional. I think he's a very professional young man. He's very successful in his career. We never knew Deputy Watkins. No one knew he played football. I mean, we don't. We didn't know who he was. But when he came in and we had a conversation, he was very professional. And at, I don't believe at any point in time did he feel that there was anything related to race during our conversation. I apologize as a sheriff. Everything that happens here and fails to happen is my responsibility. And quite honestly, I thought the issue was over. Now, as far as uh, his attorney, I tell you, I mean, who's the only one that really gains out of this? I don't know how much her hourly rate is, but what I'm saying is, is that uh, I, I don't really see anything here, and, and I think it's wrong, I think it's wrong, and I'm adamant about that with the way Mr. Perez uh, uh, portrayed this, this traffic stop. It's a minute and 31 seconds, and he totally drowned it out, the main interaction between Deputy Watkins and Mr. Roberts. We've offered, uh, matter of fact, we've offered Mr. Roberts to do a ride along with our deputies if he would choose to, and he was receptive to it, but again, I don't think his attorney is in favor of that in any form or fashion. One quick question, sir. Uh, you know, he pulled out to his driver. Mm -hmm. Some people say, well, he was already in his, in his brother. Mm -hmm. So what did you tell about that? What did you say about that? I'm well, we don't know. We have many people that make traffic stops and people pull into a safe place and they pull into a driveway. It's a, a, a Washington State plate. I mean, I, I don't believe Deputy Watkins knew that the individual lived there. I, I, I can't say that. But um, anybody else have any? Sure, for the lights on. <coughs> just when they pulled into the house or were they on as they were driving? Did he know he was being pulled over? When were I, the flashing I, lights? They're on for a brief period. I, I can't tell you the ex exact amount of time, but obviously he knew he knew he was close to his house. He, he, he simply drove to his house. I don't have an issue with that if he felt safer driving to his own home. I, I'm, I can't recall exactly, but I'm very sure that he knew the lights were on behind him. So did, could you say that he did anything wrong? Did he drive around <clears throat> the speeding? Other than the speeding. Speeding. Yeah, speeding is our only issue that we had with Mr. Mm -hmm. Roberts. That, so that's Mr. It. Roberts didn't do anything wrong? No, I, no, not at all. No. No, he complied. He complied when the deputy told him, get back in your car. He's probably thinking, why do you need me to get back in my car? And well, deputy Watkins is back on the road? Yes, sir. Oh, yes. yes sir. So when Deputy Watkins says that he was not compliant, I think, <clears> he said it for a second, what do you say about that? Obviously, he's getting experience. He's Again, correct. He's a rookie. Um, Correct. Can that, you, can, does experience change that? Does training change that? I mean, Tra experience greatly changes that factor. You know, obviously, four months is a very short time to be out there doing traffic stops. You can only imagine what it's like at 10 o'clock at night, making a traffic stop, and for it, it can give be very, uh, very anxiety-filled period there when you're doing that. So for a young deputy like that, yeah, uh, experience, training, talking, you know, all those things that we work with people to try to get them better. Um, th those are the things we're working with Mr. Watkins to be a better deputy at all times. Mainly, it's the yelling at his wife, calling <clears> for backup, 
and perceiving something to be non-compliant when it actually was? Well, I, I think that the biggest problem I had was that I didn't like him yelling at his wife. I really didn't. You know, she he could have simply said, hey, as Deputy Watkins, um, I'm, I'm stopping your husband for speeding. If you just hold on for a second, I'll be done with my business, and, and he'll be into the house. No worries. All right. But again, 23 years of experience, 30 now, 23 years with DPS, that's how I would do it. Four months on the road, I can't remember how I do it, but did it, but I'm sure it wasn't too smooth either. I have this feeling. Is it just a matter of, I tell you that what you're saying is he didn't violate any kind of policy or anything. It's just you question his tone, just the way he handled that particular moment. Absolutely. It wasn't, it wasn't as professional as it should have been. I've always said, and I will continue to say, in Fort Bend County, we're better than average. We're better than that. And that was my apologies, and I'm going to apologize again to Mr. Roberts right now. I apologize the way you were treated and maybe the way you felt at that point in time. I mean, I don't know truly how he felt, but he's thinking, I'm sitting in this car for eight minutes and nothing is happening. He doesn't at that point in time even know what the deputy's doing in his car. But the deputy then is, is calling for backup. So that, that's a long eight minutes. And I'm sure he felt a little uncomfortable. And I've apologized to him for that. I've apologized, and I agree with the captain, the way he interacted with his wife. I didn't like the tone. One thing I didn't notice, I didn't notice any cursing or any foul language in any of this. And Mr. Roberts was somewhat professional during the time, a little argumentative, but who isn't argumentative when you start receiving traffic citations? Right? You so, just chalk it up to inexperience on the deputy's part. I'm sure the deputy, again, we spoke to him, I'm sure he's going to learn. He has learned from this experience, and I think he's going to continue to learn. We all go through, I mean, we make mistakes during our law enforcement career. Um, again, violating policy and procedure, I really can't say he did that. You can't, if the deputy did say that he was nervous, it's not like we're going to start telling deputies, well, so just deal with the nervous, but don't call for backup. It doesn't make you look tough. Are you, you going to want me to do that? No. I have to respect the deputy's judgment and calling for that backup. And that's why the traffic stop went from six, eight minutes to 16 minutes, because there's that eight minutes of just plain silence. But he really didn't need backup. Oh, I, I, well, for me, I, I wouldn't need backup if I conducted a traffic stop like that, but I've been doing this 25 years. Right. You, you made a really good point a moment ago. It's like even you, when you were four months on the job, you were a lot different at handling a situation than you are after years of experience. I think everybody in the room could say the same thing about their own career, and not everybody say, hey, four, four months I, I did some things that I wouldn't do today, and this is what... Mr. Watkins will say 20 years from now, he say, oh, I, I could have done better that day. But we all learn from that. This checking, was it three months or four months? It's four months. I believe it's four months. I'd have to get his act. But I believe it was four months almost to the day when this occurred. Can you tell us his age? That I, that I do not know. Okay. Was he in a law enforcement officer somewhere <clears throat> before he came to you all? You know? No, sir. He went through our Gus George Law Enforcement Academy here, uh, graduated from there, and came to work for us. So this is his first... Law enforcement gig, pretty much. It is. Yeah. He's like in his mid-20s? That That's about, there'll be a guess. I would say maybe late 20s, but I'm just guessing. I'm guessing. So what happens Some now uh, with the, the attorney saying that she could file a complaint today with the uh, DA's office? Oh, that's fine. Um, district attorney will probably call us and ask for the video, and they can do with it what they want. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't, I mean, I don't think anyone in this room feels something was criminally wrong here. Do you? Is there anybody here that feels that there's some criminal implications here? Does it harm your case that the charges were dropped before the right to stop? I, did, I didn't make that decision. I <clears throat> let the patrol captain make that decision with Deputy Watkins. And you can. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe so at all. You know, and even when you look at this and you say, was, was Mr. Roberts beating 59 and 35? Yes, he was. Was the citation for speeding 59 and 35 a valid citation? Absolutely. When Deputy Watkins and I look at the totality of everything that occurred out there with the wife and the eight minutes and how he handled it, maybe could have done things a little bit better. He just thought that it was the better thing to do 
to be the better man to say, hey, I could have done better that day. I'm sorry, Captain. Can I dismiss this? Can I reduce this down to a warning? And I've got no problem. And I can't imagine anybody here um, has, a, has a problem with, with him taking that initiative and reducing it to a warning. Sheriff, it sounds like the, the thing that you want to get across more than anything else is that this was in no way related to race. I, I don't believe so. And I, and, and I believe the conversation when I had with Mr. Roberts in my office, I believe we formed that conclusion at that point in time that this wasn't a, a race issue. I think that I think there are going to be media outlets, maybe even in this room, that are going to try to turn it into that because that's what I believe Mr. Perez did. He tried to turn this into a race issue. And I think it's shameful. Did, did Mr. Perez ever reach out to you guys to get a... He did. He, he called a couple of times or sent emails, uh, and then I tried to call him back, and then I received voicemails a couple of times, and then I just stopped attempting to call him. I tried a couple of times, and it went to his voicemail. So I don't know what was... What what he, you, go ahead, ma'am. What do you say to, you know, USA Today has obviously national um, people all over the country are going to be watching that and say, you know, it's Texas. That's just the way it is in Texas. What do you say? You said earlier Fort Bend County is the most diverse county in the country. So hmm? people outside of Texas maybe not know, you know, the Northeast, well, California. What do you say to people that are like? Let me tell you about Texas. Let me tell you about Fort Bend County specifically. We are the best county of the 254 the diversity that makes up this county, the few complaints that we actually receive from the 800,000 residents that call Fort Bend County home. I couldn't be more proud of the 819 men and women that call Fort Bend County Sheriff's Office home. And I don't like the fact that we're going to get some that are going to try to take some of the, the national uh, issues that are out there as it relates to race and try to bring that here in the Fort Bend County and make an issue like this into a race. Because this can be very dangerous, too, Mr. Perez. This can be very dangerous. And I think it's irresponsible. I think we're through. Thank you so much for being here.